Welcome everybody to the AI Files. Thanks for joining in today. What I'm gonna go through is a snackable lab sort of view into what is the newest model on the block, which is Claude Opus 4.5. Uh, I'm gonna give a little quick intro on what the model is, but I'm gonna spend the rest of this short little video going through my initial thoughts and practical uses of the model. And um, I'll tell you exactly what I think and how it turned out. So stick around wait for the intro and then i'll come back and we'll get into it thanks again greetings welcome to the ai files podcast if you're looking to stay up to date on the ai this is the podcast for you i'm shada hussain i'm the director of ai at microsoft and i'm your co-host hello everybody jamie basilico as you know already i'm the other co-host here for the ai files uh my day job is is a data and AI technical specialist and architect. And as a reminder, please note, this is not an official Microsoft channel. So the views and opinions expressed by myself and Shadab are our own and do not represent the views of Microsoft. Okay, so I mentioned it, this snackable is gonna be all about Claude Opus 4.5. Um, well, obviously it was just released, um, uh, actually, it depends on when you're watching this, but it was released about five or six days ago. I'm recording this on Sunday, right after Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So there was a, a lot of different model announcements over the last week, everything from uh, Gemini uh, 3.0 to the GPT 5.1 and, and Code Max um, or Codex Max. And then lo and behold, we have a new model from Anthropic. Uh, so this kind of rounds out the 4.5. We got um, Sonnet, um, you know, a little while ago, we had Haiku recently, and now Opus, which is their biggest and baddest model, baddest in terms of um, capabilities, uh, you know, being best of breed, um, which you'll see in a minute, at least for some of the key things that you might be interested in, which is really on the developer side. Let me share a uh, my screen real quick, and we'll get into what are, you know, some of these capabilities. And then I'm going to just jump into my own experiences using this model literally just over the last couple of days. And this is a real life project, so um, I'll, I'll show you what, what what I was able to find. So, like I said, Opus 4.5, it's the latest model from Anthropic. Um, here's like just some of the top line things. I just want to make sure we're all grounded and at least have some some general knowledge of what 4.5 is. So, again, latest model from Anthropic. It was released, uh, I believe, on November 24th, 25th, somewhere around there. Like I said, five or six days ago. Uh, this is state of the art for coding, certainly, and also for agents. So it's not just chat. So Anthropic certainly is positioning this as the top model for coding at agents and just overall general computer use. And they've been doing this all along. I mean, when you look at where Anthropic has been positioning things, it's, it's been around the developer community. So state of the art, uh, I, I, you could read more things on this. Like they did an internal um, coding exam that they do for their folks that are coming in. Um, no model has ever been able to complete the coding exam. Uh, this was able to um, complete it and do it in under that two hour mark and this beat out any human uh, previously. And, you know, it, it does uh, nudge out Gemini 3.pro and GPT 5.1. I'll show a, a quick benchmark. So that's number one. It's really good at long horizon autonomy. So being able to just, you know, let it go basically um, and just let it do its thing. Now, what's interesting about this is that it does it in fewer tokens, and if you've been following Anthropic, it's probably one of the biggest gripes is the, the token window and how to use um, the models itself, as well as then the previous version of Opus was quite expensive. So here's the real um, uh, differentiator is that it's able to do these long running tasks, but it's also being able to do it with a more efficient token context than how it's actually handling those things. You put that in conjunction with um, you know the, the SWE bench scores that it has, and it's scoring really well and then also being more efficient. So when you compare that to, let's say, something like um, Sana 4.5, which was cheaper, um, certainly than Opus 4.1, when you compare it to the context efficiencies that Opus 4.5 has, it's it's able to even do it cheaper than what Sana 4.5 is. Um, and let alone having to rerun things, it just actually does it in some cases in you know a single shot, if not um, you know far fewer than just um, what Sonnet 4.5 may do. The other cool thing about the Opus 4.5 is it's actually made for computer use and um, its ability to think better about what's contextually. So when you think about the capabilities around seeing what's on your screen and then being able to do these um, you know, computer use tasks, does it much better than previous incarnations of these different models. The other thing too, is that it's it works in conjunction with uh, Excel, PowerPoint, being able to um, create content in, in that regard 
There's also, um, you know, this is where Microsoft comes in as well. They're not using the Opus 4.5 just yet, but we, we've seen advancements in the ability to um, utilize these Office tools like Excel and PowerPoint, where Anthropic is actually powering the generation of, you know, literally PowerPoint slides. Um, so combine that with computer use in the Excel pieces and, and PowerPoint productivity tools, you have a really great tool uh, in terms of what Claude can do with, with Opus. Um, I already mentioned, you know, Opus level brains at non Opus level price points. And it does this through not only the price cut, um, you know, that went down to what was 75 cents on an output tokens down to something a lot more um, tangible. But when you combine that with this context efficiency and what it's able to do in the model just makes it even more efficient as far as price points. Um, last but not least, you know, um, Anthropic has always been about safety. So they've included these things on inside of opus um, strong safety numbers robustness in the way that these workflows uh, run so those are you know five top bullets of what opus is or at least 4.5 opus is uh, let me show you some of the benchmark um, pieces here so as i mentioned already the sweet benchmark um or the sweet benchmark verified blows out any model that exists out there today um you know we had gemini uh, 3 pro and and gpt 5.1 codex max um those have literally been um, you know, the newer kids on the block, Sonnet 4.5, you know, still edge those out um, outside of the the most recent G GPT um, 5.1 Codex Max. You see where these are. Now, a couple of percentage points is a huge number when we look at, you know, 77.9 to 80.9. So this is three percentage points higher than the best model up until the point where the Opus 4.5 was released. Um, and you can see the large jump between Opus 4.1 and, and 4.5. Obviously, Sonnet has been the model that most people have been using up to this point, including myself, um, for a lot of the code generation. To put it in context, too, um, you know, when when we look at these um, the benchmarks, it it it's been not just about the um, SWE benchmark. So you know, just just to kind of put things um, you know out there and, and making sure people are aware that you know this model is really good. Does it hit the numbers in every benchmark? No. You know, there are certain things that um, you know, the other models are better at, um, you know, there are um, certain other benchmarks. You know, when we look at um, benchmarks, let's say, for example, in the uh, multilingual Q&A or visual reasoning or um, graduate level reasoning, um, those are either one by GPT um, 5.1 or Gemini Pro. So this Opus model isn't the best in class for everything. And I think that's the key point is you want to use a model where its strong points are. Um, obviously, in agentic coding, um, agentic terminal coding, uh, agentic tool use, the Opus 4.5 is hands down the model to use. All right. So all that being said, that's sort of like high level info. Let me get into things that I think you're going to be most interested in. And that is actually using this in real life. So. Uh, let me let me share my screen and show a couple of things. Um, let's get back to StreamYard. All right, so I'm sharing my entire desktop now at this point. Um, again, benchmarks that you saw. So let me put this in context first. So as I mentioned, I've been using these tools. I've used them inside of Cursor. Um, I have used them inside of Visual Studio Code. I've been using both interchangeably. Why that's important, I started a, an application development. I'm not going to get into the full reasonings why, uh, but I, I'm um, not only do I like to tinker, but I'm also on a couple of um, HOA boards um, here uh, where I live. So I, I saw the need to build something. And that something was the... Um, what I'm calling the knowledge helper. This is the actual application. I'm not gonna go through the app. What I wanna tell you though, is how I used Opus for enhancing this application. So in a nutshell, this application is take different documents within an HOA and then chat over it. There's a lot more bells and whistles and things that I built into this app. Part of it was for me to help myself as the treasurer of one of these HOAs. Part of it was also, hey, I want to learn how to do development and do some vibe coding. Um, so let me do it on something that I know I'm going to need or want to use in my day-to-day -day life. So that's what this application is. Why am I telling you this? Well, I started to build this about six months ago, and I did it through Cursor. And 
at that point in time, I was using the GPT 4.0 and then 4.1. So this whole application with its chat interface was based upon the chat completions through the um, open uh, the um, open AI um, APIs, and it's using the 4.1 model. And I'm using Azure AI search underneath the covers for the vector data store and being using that as my um, retrieval augmented generation system, my rag. So the problem with that was I wanted to, to, to kind of step up this application into current technology, that being using you know, the latest models. Since I'm using OpenAI, I wanted to use the um, GPT-5 model. And since I'm using the chat completions API, I wanted to use the responses API. So I know that doing that shouldn't be that hard, but it would take certainly some time to do the unraveling and rebuild all of that with the latest technology. Also, I mentioned that I'm using Azure AI Search. I'm using the chat on your um, data, um, which again is a layer that Microsoft has put in. So I am using this through um, Azure OpenAI and leveraging um, uh, some of the APIs through the Azure world. So with the 4.1 model, that um, RAG pattern is built into the calls with the um, chat completions um, API. If anyone has done some development, that should probably set off some um, sirens or, or bells and whistles in the back of your head because the GPT 5.1 through responses API doesn't support that mechanism. You have to actually decouple your RAG pattern and do it separately and then send in the context into the responses API call. So knowing all that, I don't want to write all that so I wanted to use the um, uh, an agentic, quote unquote, vibe coding, context um, coding, whatever you want to use. I actually happen to prefer the term context coding rather than vibe coding. So when I wanted to do this context coding, I started out with Sonnet 4.5. And I asked it to, yes, let's change this application over to the, um, in this scenario, it was, um, using the Sonnet 4.5, but change it over into using the GPT 5.1 and the Responses API. So uh, just to give you a little background, this is the system architecture. Like I said, I'm not going to go crazy describing this whole app, but I just want to give you some context. Um, this is my GitHub repro. This is private, so don't ask me for this. This is a, uh, for me and a couple of other developers that are building this app. But it's got a client layer. layer. I'm using Next.js in the front end. Um, it's got an application layer, which is the APA routes. But here's where you know um, I've got my back end pieces, as I just described. I've got um, this Azure AI platform, which is now using GPT.5, um, search um, various different um, AI services and skill sets inside of the Azure AI search. So it's pretty in depth for what I'm doing inside of that search service, inside of um, the AI models. I also have two different, actually, I have three different models that I'm using one for the actual chat. I'm also doing some categorization of the types of questions that are coming in and storing that. So I, I've got these calls going all over the place is, is the real um, thing that I wanted to tell you. So here's here's the um, here's the, the different view at, at what I'm actually doing. So the user question comes in, I have these routes. Um, I'm, I'm calling the main GPT-5 response, um, but I'm also doing this categorization. And then I've got all these different things, whether or not it's going to the database for storing, um, how it's calling the uh, the RAG pattern through Azure AI Search, so on and so forth. So as I mentioned, this was in a 4.1 and integrated through chat completions. So I tried to do this with Sonnet, and I, I did my context um, context coding I ran agent mode inside of Visual Studio and I let it go. And it did change my code. The problem is with Sonnet 4.5, it did not know anything about the fact that the chat on your data integrated into the responses API, it's not supported. So I had all of these coding errors um, and, and they were popping up everywhere. It, it just didn't get the responses right. I'm sure if I did multiple turns to try to get that to run correctly using Sonnet, um, 4.5 inside of the Visual Studio environment, it probably would have handled it, but I probably would have had it gone through 20, 30 different iterations going back and forth. If anyone has, you know, done quote unquote the vibe coding, you know it's not just you know one one prompt and you're done. So what I did is Opus came out. I'm like, let me try this again. By the way, I, I didn't go forward with it. I said, forget it. Um, with the Sonnet 4.5, I you know was 
going away on vacation. And then we had the holidays coming in. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll get back to it in December. Lo and behold, Opus 4.5 comes out right around Thanksgiving. Had a little bit of time um, you know, during the holiday. So I said, let me give this a try. So the first thing I had Opus do was look at my code and I asked it to generate a markdown file with what it would need to do to migrate my 4.1 to 5.1. This is what it generated. So it looked at all of my code and came up with what did it need to do, the complexities, where, where did it need to get to, and you know, gave me an easy, you know, medium, hard for all the different things it needed to do and where it needed to take those. And it also gave me a couple different choices for what I wanted to change. So I used this output. And again, I directed Opus 4.5 to look at my code, generate a markdown file to interrogate what I needed to do within my app. Now, what I did next was I used that markdown file. And so here's, this is literally my code. Um, here's that um, change management one. So I'll open it up, reveal, or um, open a preview. Here's that literally that same um, markdown file with what I needed to do to change my code. Now, again, at this point, I did not change any of the code or I did not have any agents do that. What I then did, and here's where you see um, inside of Visual Studio, I'm telling it to use Opus 4.5 preview. What I did at this point was say, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to do this because I already did it, but I'll show you. Um, I dragged that file in and I did something as simple as, you know, please review um, the change impact analysis and then please do part one to change my coding to leverage the open AI responses, API and GPT 5.1. So it's literally the, the prompt that I use. I, I'm not gonna do this now because I already did it. So by kicking that off, I'm not gonna tell you it was a one shot. I would lie, it would be lying if I did. But after it ran through the code with 4.5, all I had to do was change one additional thing in the code because it got confused on um, temperature and some of the, the parameters that I was using within the chat completions into here. So I did two more prompts to fix the code. So literally you know, going back and saying, you know, here's the error I got, go back into Opus, um, into this agent mode, and it fixed it. So literally within three prompts, after creating this change impact, I had all of my code changed to use the responses API. I had a new rag pattern implemented because it needed to separate that and instead of being integrated inside the chat completions call. And it also you know, changed all the things I needed in my model. Three prompts, did all the things I needed to do. And um, yeah, this would have taken me, if I didn't have the agent mode, it certainly would have taken me like two or three weeks just to code. If I was doing this probably with um, 4.5 um, Sonnet, or even I, I didn't try it with GPT 5.1 Codex or, um, or Gemini 3, but I have a feeling it probably would have been the same ballpark of Sonnet 4.5. So summarize that again, three prompts. Main one was off of the change, um, change document that I had Opus build for me. And then um, two extra prompts to fix the error, done. Um, so huge saver. I am definitely a believer in Opus 4.5. Uh, hopefully you walk away from this, getting a little bit of appreciation of not only what Opus 4.5 can do, but um, you know, seeing it in action um, here and, and how to use it. So again, whether or not you're using Cursor, uh, Windsurf, um, Visual Studio Code, like I'm doing here, you know, you have this available to you. Definitely recommend trying it out, putting it, put your, um, you know, IDE in agent mode and let this thing rip. I'm very impressed with uh, what 4.5 can do. So anyway, um, thanks again for listening. Um, again, tell your friends, um, you know, about our AI files, um, the more people that get exposed to this, um, obviously the the more exposure that we'll get, and we'll keep on pumping out content for all you folks. And um, so, like and subscribe. Um, thanks again, and uh, happy coding, and try out Opus 4.5. Thanks.